Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy and I'm so excited to finally bring you guys a sewing pattern on the Y2K lace camis I made a while back. So in that video, I show you guys how to drape it and I know some people don't have a dress form. I finally made a digital sewing pattern and it's available to download in my Etsy. With this pattern, you can use any stretch fabric. So I'm gonna show you guys how I use stretch velvet to create it and stretch lace galoon. You can also um, opt out of using stretch lace if your cups aren't sheer. I recommend any stretch fabric that stretches four ways. Also use that same exact pattern to create this for a more full coverage look. As you can see, this was originally a like long lace cami. I just placed a sewing pattern so the hem and the neckline would have the lace. Since I was working with velvet, I just made another cami and I used my silk lace cami pattern. Your top could just be made out of any fabric as long as it's finished on the areas that need to be instead of having the lace applique. So I created this really nice velvet top with fringe and this was previously a scarf before so I go over how to cut your pieces in order to create this. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. For this lace cami, I'm just using this stretch velvet top I thrifted and it's a four-way stretch velvet. You can also use any type of knit top that stretches four ways or fabric, just make sure it's stretchy. I cut at the side seams and the shoulder seams so I can get the most out of this top. I start cutting out my pieces, so I'm just folding the front piece of this top in half so I can cut the front under bust on the fold, so I just put it in place and cut. After cutting out the front under bust, I just leave this piece folded so I can take my ruler and just cut out two and a half inch wide strips and I'm just cutting out just as much as I can so I can sew this together and use it as bias tape later. I take the back panel of the top and just fold it in half so I can cut out the back piece of the lace cami so I'm just placing it on the fold again and repeating the same steps as the other one and I'm just gonna cut out some bias strips with the rest of it. For the cups of this, I'm gonna use some stretch lace galoon. I'm taking my lace and just laying it flat. I grab the sewing pattern and just line up that straight edge with the low point of the scallop on the lace. So you can see the sewing pattern is bigger than my lace galoon. My lace galoon is only six inches wide. I recommend getting a wider one, but you can also just use this and it's fine. We can make a hidden join and I will show you how to do that. Just cut out your two lace cups first. When I work with lace, I like to just cut out one side and then just place it right on top of the lace and find the mirror image so the cups match and I just pin it into place and cut. It's time to add the hidden join to the cup, so I just take the scrap pieces that I cut off the lace and just kind of match the scallops mirrored image like this and I'm just placing the cup right on top of those pieces and you're just going to pin it in place and take it to the sewing machine and just do a zigzag stitch to join these pieces. After doing the hidden join, you can see now it's just one big lace piece and it's enough for the sewing pattern. So I'm just fixing my cup pattern and just cutting out the piece correctly now. And if you don't want sheer lace cups, you don't have to use the lace glue and you can also just use your stretch fabric and just have a finished edge at the neckline. And now to sew in your darts, just mark the darts on your lace. I like to use my washable marker, it makes it so much easier. After I marked those darts, I just fold right sides together and just pin the dart into place. I take it to the sewing machine. I like to use a stitch size 2 or smaller when I'm working with lace and since it's very delicate, you can use tissue paper to sew underneath just because sometimes the needle likes to pull down your lace. Back tack at the beginning of the dart and don't back tack when you get to the top part of the dart. We're going to tie it off with some knots. Leave a tail of thread so you can just do about three knots just to secure your dart into place. Trim your extra thread and just push the seam allowance of the dart towards the center front and just pin it into place. And now we can attach our cups to the front under bus. So start with your left cup and just start pinning it from the side seam to the center front and then just 
stretch and ease everything else in with pins so you're going to be stretching this as you sew i use my overlock machine to sew the cup in and just stretch as i sew you can also just use your regular sewing machine and do a straight stitch on a small stitch size and just stretch as you sew because we cut the fabric on the stretchiest part around the body your stitches should not rip i just take the other cup and then just place it right on top of the center front so it's slightly overlapping as you can see and then I just pin and ease it the same way as I did the other cup and I just overlocked it so after sewing both of your cups in take your back piece and just place right sides together and just pin both your side seams I overlocked both of the side seams you can also just use your straight stitch machine at a small stitch like I said and push your seam allowance towards the cups and with the bias strips we cut out earlier, I just sew them all together so I get one big strip. The shell is pretty much sewn together, so now I'm just marking the center back of the top so I can just line up the middle of the bias tape to the center back. And I just start pinning the center back to the center back of the bias, and I just keep pinning all the way around the armhole and the back of the top like so. I take it to my sewing machine and just do a straight stitch and set it to a stitch size 5 because we're just basting this on. And I recommend using a Teflon foot to sew velvet because it's very slippery so just be careful when you sew velvet. It likes to move around a lot. You can also just baste it just to have more caution. And I'm just sewing 3 8 of an inch all the way around. And after sewing the bias into place, I just take it and fold it once and then fold it again. As you can see, now it's like binding the top. So I just pin that into place and then I just repeat to the rest of the back and armhole. Pinned it into place. I took it to the sewing machine and did a three step zigzag. I definitely recommend basting your binding before you take it to the sewing machine just so you don't have a lot of pins in the way. For the straps, I cut out two 15 inch pieces that were an inch and a half wide and I folded right sides together and just overlocked them so I end up with a 3 8 inch spaghetti strap. Before attaching your straps, just trim the binding at the neckline and then just stretch it and you'll hear the basting thread snap and then you can just start removing that out and then you'll be able to just stretch your top. I take one strap and just attach it to that strap point at the neckline and just place the cup right on top of it and I just pin it in place. Repeat to the other strap point and then I take it to the sewing machine and then I just do a zigzag stitch and just secure those straps in place. And I dislike how the strap points look with the stitching so I like to cut out a piece of applique from the stretch lace and then just place like the flower on top and do a zigzag stitch and when i attach the back straps i just measure three and a half inches from the center back on each side and then that's where i place my straps so i pin them in place and take it to the sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch and for the final touch i like to make a bow for the center front of the top just so it adds a nice little touch to the center and i just cut out a half inch strip and like stretch it because it's a knit it won't fray so i just stretch it as you can see the ends start to roll and i just make a bow by hand and not the ends i sew the bow by hand and now it's time for the lettuce hem so i just do this on my overlock machine with my right needle in and i removed my left needle i have an in-depth tutorial on how to do a lettuce hem on your serger so i will link that but you can also do a lettuce hem on your regular sewing machine just set it to a zigzag stitch at a really small size and you're just going to overcast at the hem and stretch as you sew i also wanted to share how you can use the silk lace cami pattern and just use a scarf or something else with a finished edge or you can just make your own finished edge so i'm using this velvet scarf to cut out this top and you don't have to use lace on this pattern you can use any woven fabric and this is a non-stretch velvet scarf that i found so beautiful and i loved the fringe so i wanted to keep the fringe at the hem and i'm just using the finished edge at the center front 
instead of having like lace applique. For the center back, I just folded the scarf in half so I can have the fringe at the bottom hem and I just straightened out the hem instead of it being slightly curved and I just pinned it in place and just cut out the back. And for the cups, I just cut on the finished edge of the scarf for the cup neckline. And you just follow the silk lace cami tutorial for the sewing, minus all of the lace applique. I just binded the armholes in the back with bias, or you can use elastic, your choice. And you get a really nice top without any lace. 